this morning, I found some volunteer tomatoes in my garden. And so I'm gonna dig them up, check this out. Right here, these are some volunteers coming up between my carrots, radishes, and kale. And uh, there's just a big cluster of them. So there was obviously a tomato here that uh, fell to the ground and became a bunch of baby tomatoes. So I'm gonna dig that up. I believe, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm about 80% sure that this is a tumbler tomato. And I've had a lot of luck with the little tumbler tomatoes. They're small and compact, uh, little plants. They put on just piles and piles of cherry tomatoes. If they don't get big, they don't have a large growth habit. They're small, compact, uh, like a um, determinate tomato. But unlike a de de determinate, they will give you fruit the entire season. So I'm gonna dig this cluster up, separate them, and uh, put them in little pots and maybe I can find homes for them. So I always like volunteers. It's like free work done for you. So I'll start with that. You guys can see here. Shake some of this dirt off. And it just looks like there were two tomato plants. There's a cluster of tomato plants here and there. So there's probably was two little tomatoes that fallen here. And uh, then they, you know how tomatoes have just piles and piles of seeds inside. So they've all germinated and they're coming up. Now these I'm relatively sure are the little tumblers so I'm gonna save them I have some more volunteers around here but I'm not as confident about what they are oh here's one right here too I'll get this guy I'm not as confident as what they are so I'm not gonna save them um, I couldn't tell you if they were hybrid tomatoes or whatever in other locations these tumblers have bred true to their parents every year that I've saved them so I will continue to, whenever I see some of these guys volunteering up, I'll grab them and save them. <clears throat> so I'll just set these guys right here, and then I will go separate the little seedlings. Well, check this out, I'll show you some more. So right here, you can see, where are they at? Right there. So here's some more volunteers coming up. I have no idea what these are. They're in my uh, one of my rounds, and I like to compost directly into my beds. I don't really find it necessary to always have a separate compost pile, but uh, so I, I'll compost right in my own beds. And then what you end up with is you end up with volunteers coming up in here. I have no idea what these are. I'm probably going to pull them out like weeds. I'm not going to save them. But here's something kind of cool. And this will commonly happen when you compost in your beds. This is a little fungus growing. And this fungus is called dog vomit, I believe. And the reason they call it dog vomit is that's exactly what it looks like. And so when you have a pile of organic material in here, you're going to have funguses grow and dog vomit is one of the more common ones you'll see uh, come up in your garden. It's not going to hurt anything. It's just yucky. It's kind of gooey. See, it's kind of gooey as I touch it. Slimy, snotty looking stuff. I don't know if that's in focus. But it'll come up like this in the morning. You'll see it. And then by noonday, it's shriveled up and just turned to powder and gone. It's not a bad thing. It means that stuff is decomposing in your compost or in this case in my raised bed and you can see all the stuff in here i got dog hair and 
tamale wrappers. I think those are tamale wrappers. Uh, that looks like paper. Lots of eggshells. So I'll compost directly in the beds right up until it's time to plant. So let's go, uh, let's go separate these guys and give them a new home. So you guys can see I'm going to recycle my recycled cups. So there's no sense in wasting making more garbage. So that's what I'm going to do with this. And got some compost. It's not completely mature compost. You see there's a lot of wood chip in here. Um, it's getting there. But it'll be fine for this. They're not going to stay in here too long. They may, you may see them yellow a little bit when you use compost that's not mature. Uh, you just have to then feed them a little bit, a little uh, fish emulsion or something to uh, keep them from turning yellow. So anyways, that's it. I'm going to fill a few of these up and I'll transplant those guys real quick here this morning before I go to work. Alright, so I'm going to do these real quick. I don't have a lot of time this morning to go through this process. So I'm just going to do a few of them. Busy morning out here today. Uh, so you got these guys, and they're all clustered together like this. Seeds are, or the roots are all bound together. And the easy trick for that is to take them, throw them some water, massage that little root ball a little bit. And they just start to break apart as the soil breaks off and there you go tomato plants free and clear all right <clears throat> you're not really hurting them at this stage they're pretty resilient as far as root damage uh, yeah obviously you don't want to break off any roots but then I'll just jam my finger in there and that root's dangling down heavy and I'll just fill in some soil around it and that guy's transplanted. Ta-da! Do another one. Same process. And a long root hanging down. Wood chip in the way. Two. Real fast. Okay, if you find some tomatoes in your garden that you know what they are, you know they're not just from some hamburger you threw out there, but they're from something you want. This is a process you can do. And I'll just keep doing this. It takes seconds. See how it just comes apart? Now all that soil's gone. See, roots are all exposed. Now you have something you can work with. Instead of tearing them apart, you'll still tear a few roots, but not as badly if you do this. And you can just kind of... Don't leave them out too long because they'll dry right up and then they're just garbage. <clears throat> size one right there. Nice looking plant. Let's save that. It's too little. Okay. So there we have a pretty good looking plant. Here. Again, just going to make a hole. And save this little tumbler. Tumbler. There we are. Piece of cake. That's it. I have a lot of tomatoes go through here today, so that'll be really boring to watch. So let's just go to the next step. 
And the next step is watering. Because I just put them in fairly dry soil. Um, that's not terribly compacted. So I like to water from below whenever possible. And the simplest way to do that, obviously, is to put them in a little container, like this one here. Or I use those big black ones, wherever they all went. My wife cleaned up my mess out here yesterday. Yeah, typically, I like to use these little black containers. But for the sake of this display or demonstration, I just grab this white container. And then I'll water from below. Water should percolate up to the root zone without compacting the soil too much. Um, and there you go. You give these away or plant them in your garden. It didn't cost you anything. It's kind of fun to do. Now watch them out. Watch them for any yellowing. They may yellow. Uh, if you're using compost that has too much wood chip like I'm doing here, that's what I'll have to watch out for. But if you're just using potting soil, you should be fine. So That's it, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Off to work. I better clean these up real quick before I go to work. Put this guy somewhere where I can get it later.